Hey guys, in this video, I wanna go through my lightweight product dashboard and how I manage all tech delivery tasks for my startup. This system is absolutely ideal if you're a founder um, who also needs to be the product manager. If you work for a, a product manager at a small tech startup or you just have a, a generally smaller team, this is using Notion. I honestly think for small teams, it's 10x better than Jira. It's just a really good lightweight system. You don't get bogged down in a ton of detail that you don't necessarily need. I just generally really enjoy using it. It keeps you focused on what needs to be done, which is the output, without getting you know weighed down in all of these like silly charts and all this kind of crap, which to be honest, doesn't make any difference. It's just focusing on the problems, focusing on the features that need to be done. Uh, just generally, I think a great system. So let's take a look. So in the product home, I have different elements for different parts of the product development process from epics to tasks to goals. I think logically it would actually make sense for us to start with epics. So let's dig in here. Um, okay, so epics, what are they? If you're completely new to product management, I would suggest you maybe look up on this, but it's basically big tasks. So epics are like maybe five or six or seven or however many tasks that together deliver some kind of value. Uh, so each epic, in my opinion, should be able to be deployed within a couple of weeks uh, and it's made up of a number of tasks that will contribute to that epic. Uh, if this is like maybe not making sense, hopefully it's gonna make sense when we dig into it. Now I've got this set, this set up in a, in a Kanban board um, and it's just very easy for me to follow kind of what we're working on, what we need to work on next. If we dive into this one here that's in progress, uh, making staking easy to understand. So I actually have a template that I run for each epic, which kind of gives me this structure. Uh, but generally what I like to start with is just writing down the epic goal. Uh, it just needs to be very clear about what this feature is meant to achieve um, and as soon as I've written that I'll then get into whimsical start wireframing some potential design solutions flowcharts that kind of thing user research if you want to do that you can bring this into this stage as well um, obviously really important but kind of dependent on what stage of the product development process you're at uh, and then we have the Figma. So the, these are the, like the high fidelity designs uh, for the Epic and I'll always link to the page directly in Figma uh, for this. Okay, so that's like the background of the Epic. Then we have the actual tasks. So what this is, is it's a tasks database. So this is one single database for all product tasks. And then what I do is I just add in, I guess the tasks, the stories, the requirements, uh, whatever you wanna call them and just make it crystal clear what the requirements are for that particular task, who's gonna own it, and then the release. The release just means that for this, the landing page, the movement of the staking page and the nav bar, once they're all done, we can make that first release to production, and then we'll move on to the second release, which is, which is these three tasks. Um, now within the task itself, I'm pretty lazy at writing like uh, stories at the moment. Trust me, if you're like a, a founder who's got a balance like marketing, product, strategy, all of this kind of stuff together, um, you, you might be able to feel my pain. Um, but basically I'm just putting down like bullet points of what needs to be done. Sometimes I'll write the story out, but usually I'm working directly with the developers to create this anyway. Uh, there's only a couple of them. So, you know, we all know uh, exactly what needs to be done. Maybe not pre best practice, but yeah, whatever, shoot me. Uh, the one <laughs> Work, the work gets done. Okay, so this is epics. Um, pretty much all you need to know, really. Pretty simple. It's a load of tasks combined together to make a big task that are in a board. Uh, and yeah, that's that. Just keep them moving through, and you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be happy. The next few views we have are of the tasks themselves. So while we do have the tasks within the epic, it's not the most efficient way to to manage things. So what I tend to do is I'll split out the tasks into a view where I can view them by the epic and the stage that each task is on. So what I'll do is in the stand up, I'll open up this view, I'll open up the epic that we're currently working on, and then I'll just be like, okay guys, you know, what are we working on today? What did you do yesterday? What are the blockers? Just standard, like, I guess, what's the word for it? Scrum master stuff. Uh, and then just pull them through the tasks depending on the stage that they're at. Uh, and yeah, this is just a really good place for us to kind of start the conversation about what we're going to be working on today um, and makes it very easy for us as well to see where everyone's at with, with things. So this is generally how I prefer to conduct stand-ups using this epics view. We also have the tasks by assignee view, which can be useful, um, not as useful as the epics, but like if you're just speaking to like one developer or 
if for whatever reason you just need to highlight a single developer's work, uh, I can just open this up and be like, okay, Raul, what's he working on? All right, I can see that. I can see he's working on this right now. Um, and then it's kind of simple to just see this in one place. So I'll go into videos on how I actually created this, but basically it's just a, the product task database uh, in a slightly different view and you know with a couple of rules and filters and that kind of thing. And the final uh, task view we have is the weekly retro. This is just for me, to be honest. Uh, every week I post a, a product update onto our like medium for our community to see. Um, so if I want to understand what needs to be done, I don't use this much to be honest, because usually I just know anyway from the standups, but theoretically I could come in here and just be able to like go through the different epics and see exactly what's being completed because this is a view that says if this was moved to completed in the last seven days then I'm going to show it in this uh, in, in, in this view so kind of useful um, the next thing we have is documentation not too much to say here it's really important I think when you're starting a company to just get into the habit of documenting stuff like honestly I've worked at some absolute shit shows where you just turn up and there's just like no documentation on anything so here we have like some DevOpsy stuff. Um, you know, we have audit reports for contracts that we've uh, created. Uh, we have documentation on how to run certain things. This is more for the developers themselves rather than me. I sometimes get involved in it, but, but not so much to be honest. But as a PM, you should generally know like when something requires documentation, if you just created a new massive feature or you know, a new staging environment that no one knows how to use, uh, probably write some documentation. <laughs> so when a new hire joins the team, uh, you'll be able to help them out with that. Okay, so the next one is how we work. So this is basically just like SOPs. Um, this is always like a work in progress. And for our whole organization, we actually have like a complete SOPs database. Uh, so, and this just filters out the ones that are specifically um, for products. So if I come in here, I can see the rule, you know, department contains product, and it's just gonna show me the SOPs that are relevant for product. So this is just one I wrote on setting up Gnosis. Uh, this is our multi-sig, so developers, uh, you know, dependent on their requirements might need access to this. Uh, then we have one here on like, basically what I'm talking through now, like how we go around creating tasks, how we go on working on tasks, this kind of stuff. Then we have stuff on maybe some of the partners that we use, some of the software that we use like Intercom. Uh, and that's basically a kind of, um, kind of self-explanatory, but yeah, good to write SOPs. You know, no one's gonna die from writing SOPs and they could be helpful uh, to you in a few weeks. You know, always be thinking about getting new hires in and how they're gonna, uh, you know, be onboarded and that kind of stuff. Might seem like a waste of time at the start, but trust me, uh, this kind of stuff does pay off. Okay, so finally we have the team. Uh, this was actually part of a broader initiative that I did where I just wanted everybody to be crystal clear on what was expected of them and their kind of responsibilities within the company. So this isn't specifically for product, although if you don't have one of these, I think it's kind of useful. Um, so if you come in here, like basically it's just got everyone's name, it's got what their roles are, this links to a separate roles database, which will like, I guess, give the kind of job description of what that person is meant to be doing. Um, and then what I also ask the team to do is like fill in um, their SWOT. So for me here, like I will just kind of put in my strengths and my weaknesses, my opportunities and threats and this kind of stuff. So, you know, I put him, you know, here my strengths and then my weaknesses, like, I mean, I've got way more weaknesses than that. I was obviously feeling a little bit cocky when I did this, but like, I get way too bullish on things and uh, yeah, just kind of go all at something without necessarily taking a step back. So yeah, it's just good for, I think, everyone to just be kind of transparent about what their strengths and weaknesses are. Um, again, this isn't really specifically about product management. This is more like hr -y stuff, but I think kind of useful. And the last thing that we want to go through is just like, uh, I guess, the goals uh, and how I keep momentum going. So much is said of different uh, techniques to manage throughput of tasks in, in product development. You have like Agile, uh, you know, and as part of that, you have like Scrum and Kanban and all this kind of crap. There's like even qualifications in it and everything. It's, it's insane to me, but whatever. Um, I just like to keep things very, very, very simple. Every week, we just create a few goals as a team. So I will like usually on the Monday planning be like, guys, this is what I want to achieve this week. Is it feasible? And if not, how are we going to hammer the scope to get something out that is going to bring some end value to the customer? Because that's what it's all about, right? It's just about getting something in the customer's hands that they're going to enjoy. Um, and then it might be, you know, two goals we set. It might be three, you know, maybe in past weeks, it might be, you know, five. Um, but basically we're just saying what we want to do, what we want to achieve. And then it's kind of satisfying. You get into the momentum of just checking these goals off. Um, usually they're related to epics or tasks. Um, the goals 
of the week currently are creating the landing page for Lithium Plus, um, completing best, investing V2 on a platform which has just got out today, yay, and also integrating with one of our partners to do KYC checks. Um, and then yeah, it's just like a very easy, simple, lightweight way to, to move through tasks and goals. And then it's cool, you've got this history, right, of like all the things that you never did, which is depressing. No, you always end up doing them because if they're important, you just bring the goals back up to the next week. As you can see, actually, this is kind of interesting because at the start, we were obviously like really shit at uh, estimating what we could do. Uh, look here, I even lost the plot and started giving <laughs> giving people monetary rewards for um, for like not hitting their goals. Uh, that's kind of funny. I forgot I did that. Uh, God, this week we didn't go do any goals. Um, but then like, you know, gradually, I think we've started to get, yeah, I mean, we've got a lot better. Uh, okay, last week was a shit show, but yeah, generally we're getting better at hitting our goals. And it's just nice to kind of watch through these and see them go by. Yeah, lightweight goal setting framework. Don't need to overthink this. It's just really, really easy. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. You've got two databases that are really important, the Epic space database and the Task database. I'll make a whole video on how to set that up in the future. So if you want to see like videos on product management, entrepreneurship, how to manage a startup, uh, make sure you hit subscribe. And then you've also got your documentation and how we work database, not as important, but well, the documentation one probably is. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Very lightweight, very easy to use, 10 times better than Jira. So yeah, thanks a lot and see you next time.